this could be a work of man, and if it's going to be a work of man, you just pray that you would shut it down, and you would actually not make it happen. We don't want to have the event if, if you're not going to be pleased, if you're not going to show up. And uh, we were actually praying uh, in advance that the Lord would make it His work. And, uh, and He did. And I guess the reason why I bring that up is that um, we can do all kinds of things. The Bible says we can we can give our bodies to be burned. We can give our goods to the poor. We can uh, you know we can speak in the tongues of angels. Or we can speak wonderful wisdoms of men. Uh, but if we don't do things in the right spirit, then it's really of no value. In fact, in, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says that uh, if I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but I, ha I do not have love, I become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Effectively useless. If I have all prophecies and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. So it's not that just that um, it's that the, the value is diminished. The Bible says it's worth nothing. Okay. And if I give uh, all my goods and I deliver my body to be burned and I have not love, I am not profited in love has patience, is kind, love is envious, it's not vain, it's not puffed up, does not behave indecently, does not pursue its own things, it is not easily provoked thinks no evil, does not rejoice in righteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Love quietly covers all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And I know that me reading that scripture to you may sound like I've heard it a thousand times Why you read it again. Maybe some of you are hearing it for the first time, I'm not sure. But the reason why I felt that this was really important is that in the eyes of God, love is the first and foremost of all things. Right? Peace, love, joy, grace, and peace. Joy. Uh, uh, greatest of love. What? <laughs> grace and peace, love. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, the greatest of love. And in fact, um, when the man came to uh, Jesus and he said, What is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, Love, love. Right? He said, Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind, for putting the first priority on loving God. And soul, and soul and strength. And then he says, and the second is like the first, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. And, uh, and even in certain scriptures it says that we should even consider others more important. So while some would say, well, if you don't love yourself, you can't love others, and there's some truth to that, um, we have to go beyond where, where our love is for ourselves. And we have to go beyond what's important to us, and we have to look to the greater good. And um, in the body of Christ, <clears throat> let's go to uh, uh, Ephesians, uh, if you have your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 5. good practice to go to the specific place in the Bible makes it faster than you navigate through when you need to, right? So sometimes people are visual learners as well. So hearing something doesn't sit in mind as well as actually reading more. And I know that you might have a slightly different translation, but Ephesians 5 verse 1. Ready? I'll just start reading. It says, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. So that's something to, to just pause for a second. That we understand that we're beloved children of God. And our Heavenly Father desires a certain behavior from us. Because He loves us and He, he doesn't want us to hinder or harm one another. So, therefore, be imitators of God and beloved as beloved children. And walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. And I noticed in the song that we were singing this morning, it's 
part of the message here that uh, we are to give ourselves, a, I think you prayed it, brother, a living sacrifice, right? And it just goes to show you, this is what I love about God, is that literally this morning, I did not know what I was going to talk about. I just put myself into the hands of the Lord. And on the way here, the Lord started giving me the message. And But what's beautiful was that your song, that you would obviously probably, I think you probably picked that song I'll give you during the week. When did you pick the song? Last Sunday. Last Sunday. Last Sunday, you see? So last Sunday, you picked up the song, and God gave me the message that coincides with your song this morning before I before you were singing. So the Holy Spirit does bring things together in a way that this is why, what I've learned is that if we trust in God and we trust in the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will, will lead us into all truth and show us the way we want to go. So, um, and, and give himself, and he gave himself up, Christ gave himself up, as an offering and a sacrifice to God as a, as a fragrant aroma. And it says that we are to walk just as Christ walked in that way. Right? That we are to be selfless. Right? And to give ourselves a living sacrifice. He goes on, he says, but immorality or any impure or greed, impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper amongst you. So in other words, it shouldn't exist among you. And I just want to stop and talk for a minute about when you look at the statistics of the conduct in the church versus the conduct in the world, what you find is that um, pornography addictions, uh, drug addictions, uh, adultery, fornication, uh, you, you name the different sins that are in the Bible. And the statistics are virtually the same inside the church as in the world. And that should not be the case. That should not be the case. We're, see, Jesus said, I came that you would be free. And free in peace. Now, true freedom, according to Christ, is sinlessness. It's walking without sin. Now, uh, in, in fact, um, John says, the believer of God does not sin. Now, what does that mean? Does he, does he say that you never sin? No, because he later on says that if anyone says he has no sin, he's a liar and the truth is an enemy. Right? But what does that say? It says that we have this um, mindset that sin is unacceptable. That sin is not part of our lives. It's a it's like a cancer in our lives that we have to root out. Right? And it's something that we should despise in our own lives. That's why... Uh, when Paul's reading, writing the Ephesians here, it's saying, but immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among the saints. See the consistency there in Scripture? And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. You see, once again, this is important. The Lord, the Lord is pleased when we give thanks to Him as opposed to indulging in all kinds of worldliness. For this you know with certainty that no immoral or impure person or covetous man who is an idolater has, in, has an inheritance in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ and God. Now, idolatry, a lot of times people think idolatry is bowing down to some kind of statue. And that's true that that's a form of idolatry. But idolatry is also elevating any kind of sin in your life. Any sin that you put ahead of God, and you're not willing to sacrifice that sin, get it out of your life, is idolatry. And the Lord doesn't want it in our lives. You get, see, if you understand that uh, when you bow down to an idol, it is offensive to God. When you commit sin, it is offensive to God. When we, I should say, when we should speak, speak as though I don't. Um, so the thing is, is that there's a wall of separation that happens when we sin against God. And so at the end of the day, what we should be trying to do is, first of all, not sin. And secondly, if we do, when we do, which we shouldn't do often, we should be working hard to get sin out of our life in the strength of Jesus Christ, not in our own strength. But when we do, that we go to God and we ask forgiveness. The Lord in 1 John 1, 9 says, if we will but confess our sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and he cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, you notice there that it's not just that he forgives us our sins, 
but his desire is to cleanse us from 